Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Foy, and this is some more practice on some factor labeling problems. All right, so here we go. How many cups can a box hold if it's two inches by three inches by five inches? All right, so my students always say I can't draw, which is true. So I'm gonna try to draw a box here, right? So that's a really bad box. But let's say this box is two inches by three inches by five inches, okay? And the first thing you want to do in a factor labeling problem is to write the unit that you want way on the rights. This is going to be my uh, this is going to be my finish line, all right, my finish line. So I want cups. So if I want a single unit, I'm going to start with the single unit. And what I'm looking for here is volume, right? I'm looking for volume. So I'm going to start with two inches times 3 inches times 5 inches because I know that to get volume I can multiply length times width times height, right? So here I go. I'm going to do my problem here. So what I'm going to do is I know that I can get, if I could get to cubic centimeters, I know a cubic centimeter is that many milliliters. And then I know that there are 946 milliliters in a quart. I know that. And then I know that there are four cups in a quart. So I can get there. Um, I just need to be able to get to centimeters. So I also know from my metric conversion sheet that 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. So these are all the equivalences I need to do this problem. So I am set and ready to go. So here I go. I want to get rid of inches. So I'm going to say 2.54 centimeters is in an inch. And that is going to help me get rid of that inch. Now I'm going to repeat it, 2.54 centimeters is it an inch. I'm going to get rid of that inch. Now I'm going to say 2.54 centimeters gets rid of this inch, right? So guys, these are cubic units, so I have to do this three times. Now I have centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. That's centimeters cubed, right? So now I can use my cubic centimeter thing. So I just use this. One cubic centimeter is equal to a millimeter. Now this is cubic centimeters, which literally means centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So those centimeters cancel out, right? So now I can get rid of milliliters. 946 milliliters is in one quart, right? My milliliters cancel. And then in one quart, there are four cups. So I cancel out that and I'm at cups. So that's how I know I'm finished. So then I'm going to take my calculator. 2 times 3 times 5 times 2.54 times 2.54 times 2.54 times 4 and then divided by 946, the rest are ones, equals and I get 2.078 cups. Well, clearly I only have one sig fig in my answer here, and so I'm just going to say this is two cups. So my answer is two cups, right? So the volume of that box that's two inches by three inches by five inches is two cups. So now I want to know what is the density of a box in grams per mil if that box weighs 25 pounds. So what do I want? The first thing you do is write the unit that you want on the right. This is my finish line. I want grams per mil. That diagonal line is the same thing as a horizontal line. It's a double unit. It's a fraction, right? It's one unit over another unit. Okay, and remember from the other side of um, the other problem I just did, the volume of that box is two cups. So this is the volume of the box. So we just calculated that in the last problem. So here is the saying, if you want a double unit, you start with a double unit. Well, I don't see a double unit, do you? But I can make one. Clearly, I want the mass on the top and the volume on the bottom. So I'm going to make a double unit that has that, right? So I'm going to write the mass on the top, 
which is 25 pounds, and I'm going to write the volume on the bottom, which is 2 cups. So this sets up a double unit to a double unit factor labeling problem, where I want cups, pounds per cup, converted to grams per mil. It does not matter which, I, if I do the top or the bottom first, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I know from looking at my metric conversion sheet, there are two, 454 grams in a pound. So I can get rid of pounds right away and get to grams. Whoops, sorry. It's 454 grams in a pound. And now my pounds cancel and I'm at grams. Look, that's what I wanted over here. So I'm halfway through. Now I'm trying to get from cups to milliliters. So I'm basically going to have to use some of those same equivalences that I used in the last problem, but I'll probably have to flip them around a little bit, okay? So there are four cups in a quart, and I know that there are 946 milliliters in a quart, right? So I can use those equivalences in my factor labeling skills to get rid of the unit I don't want and build to the unit that I do, trying to get to milliliters on the bottom. So now I'm going to try to get rid of cups. I'm going to use this one first. So 4 cups is equal to 1 quart. Remember, in a conversion factor, what is on the top and the bottom have to be equal to each other. Now my cups cancel, and I'm at quarts. Now I'm going to use this one, right? So 1 quart is equal to 946 milliliters. I'm using my factor labeling skills to set up the problem to get rid of the unit I don't want to get to the unit that I do. And there's my milliliters, and I am done. I'm done with the problem. Now all I have to do is just um, calculate the numbers that are left. Everything else is canceled out except the unit that I want, and now I'm going to do the math. So 25 times 454 times 4 divided by 2 divided by 946 equals 23 0.995 grams per mil. Okay, so if my problem said that I had to put it in scientific notation with sig figs, um, I'm going to go with the weakest link. So my weakest link right here is my two sig figs. So I'm going to put that in scientific notation first. I'm going to move that over 2.3995 times 10 to the 1 grams per mil. And I'm going to round to one sig fig, so that rounds to just two, times 10 to the 1 grams per mil. Okay? Awesome. All right, my last problem is going to be a double unit to a double unit. What is the speed of a snail in miles per hour if it moves 2 centimeters in 4.75 minutes? Guys, the word per means divide. It actually means divide. So what do I want way over on the right? I want miles per hour. I want a double unit. That's my finish line. If I want a double unit, I have to start with a double unit. I don't see a double unit in the problem, but I have to make one. So I want distance divided by time. So I'm going to make one. Here's my distance, my poor little snail moved, in 4.75 minutes. Okay. So now I just have to convert minutes to hours and centimeters to miles. Well, the minutes to hours sounds a lot easier. So let's do that first. Okay. So I know there are 60 minutes in an hour. And so just like that, I have converted to hours, right? That's the unit that I want on the bottom. So I know I'm done with that. Now I'm going to convert centimeters to miles, right? Centimeters to miles. This is going to be a really, really small number, right? Because centimeters um, com compared to miles is, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be a really big number, right? Because I'm, I'm getting to a, a bigger unit here. So here I go. This is a metric unit, and I'm trying to get to an English unit right? I'm trying to get to an English unit, which is miles. So the only metric to English conversion that you have on your metric conversion sheet is you have 2.54 centimeters is equal to an inch, right? And so here we go. I got to get rid of my centimeters. So 2.54 centimeters is equal to an inch. 
my centimeters cancel. Now I'm at inches, so I'm in the English system, and now I'm going to try to get to miles. Well, I know there's 12 inches in a foot, so now my inches cancel, and I know that there are 5,280 feet in one mile. Remember that you want to cancel out your units diagonally, and what is written on the top of that conversion factor has to equal what's on the bottom, right? So remember, a conversion factor is this thing, right? So a conversion factor is, um, is an equivalence. What's on the top is equal to what's on the bottom, all right? So now look, what, ha what do I have left? I have miles left on the top. I have hours left on the bottom. So I am done with my problem, right? That was really easy. So now I just have the math to do, right? I just have the math. So on the top, I have 2 times 60. Then I don't have any other numbers but 1 up there. So I'm going to say divided by 4.75 divided by 2.54 divided by 12, divided by 5,280 equals. So this is going to be 0 0.00001569 miles per hour, right? So this guy is going really slow, but that's what we would expect, right? That's what we would expect because he's only going 2 centimeters per minute, so in miles per hour that makes sense, right? So. I need to put my number in scientific notation with correct sig figs. My smallest, weakest uh, link here is one sig fig. So I'm going to put this in scientific notation. I'm going to move my decimal over one, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be a number way less than one. So that's 10 to the minus five, 1.569 times 10 to the minus fifth miles per hour. And then I only have one sig fig, so I have to round right here. I look to the right of where I'm rounding. Is that number greater than 5? Five? 5 or greater? Yes, it is, so I'm going to round up. And so my answer is 2 times 10 to the minus 5 miles per hour. That is how slow my snail is going. All right? So that's how you do a double unit to a double unit factor labeling problem. Hope that's been helpful, and I'll see you in class.